Hello again everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. We have returned in the Dalish camp, but we're not going to be here for very long, as you can see there. Um, okay, what I think we're going to do, we're going to go back to the um, the party camp, because obviously we have gotten uh, Zevran now, our little uh, elven friend. Um, so we're, we're, since we've done a bit of advancement in the story, I'm going like, to gonna talk to a few people in the camps to see what they have to say. Because obviously we can learn about Zebra as well. See what he's all about. Healthy. Oh, I can smell him fifty yards off. Leave him alone. I'm sure you're exaggerating. That may be so, but all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. Uh, can I just wave your stuff and make him clean? <laughs> Can't say that. Go on, he's getting a little rank. Excellent. I will get my soaps, and the dog shall have his bath after supper. Sorry, Jacob, but you know, personal hygiene is 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 is, is key to uh, to defeating the the darkspawn. I feel so. Uh, let's pet pet Jacob. There you go. He's having fun, right? Uh, speak to Alistar. Something on your mind? See so if he's got to say anything. Of course. Uh, Such as they are. Nope, nothing from him there. Something on your mind? Okay. Speak to Sten. You called. Sten is probably the one person I've did, who I think I've spoken to the least. I think he's like the. I am hardly surprised. <laughs> he just kind of like sits in the camp. Very well. And just exists. As but uh, hopefully I'll be able to get his sword back from him because you know, it's not bad. It I just beats. think I just prefer other people. Uh, never mind. I don't think there's really anything pertinent. Maybe Morrigan. Can I speak to Morrigan about anything? I have a thought. She's gonna fucking disapprove about something, isn't she? Uh, just the one? Oh, well, what's on your mind? We have an opportunity that I believe we should take advantage of. All right. To the point. My mother was once divested of a particular grimoire by a most annoying Templar hunter. It occurred long before I was born, but even today, Flemeth speaks of the loss with great rage. With the circle of magi in such disarray, it occurs to me that this might be the perfect time to recover the tome from their possession, for surely it eventually ah. will be in their hands. Okay. What makes you think the Majors still have this book? Flemeth is a sorceress of legend, is she not? And her grimoire would be more than a mere curiosity to Majors that daren't even glance towards the places my mother has walked for eons. <laughs> no doubt tis considered something dangerous, perhaps best locked away somewhere dark, yes? And if not, then at least I know it does not exist. But there is no harm in looking, surely. Very true. What's wrong with this grimoire exactly? It is a book of spells of the sort that Flemeth has dabbled with throughout her long life. It is not the sort of thing that would benefit a mage of the standard variety. They were taught a different path. I, however, was taught by my mother. I know a way around the wards my mother would have placed on such a tome. I know the language that she would have written it in. I would find such a tome most useful. I'm sure you would. Useful in what way? Useful in the way that it might increase my power. Useful in the way that I would become more useful to you. Does that not follow? All right, calm down. <laughs> uh, how, do you know, how do I know it's not dangerous? Dangerous? All knowledge is potentially dangerous. If you have True, some well fear of me such that I should not be allowed such knowledge, then by all means deprive me of it. I have no ulterior motive for seeking it, however. Hmm. Uh, very well. If we watch the tower, I'll look for it. Good. I am most interested to see its contents, should it be located. The grimoire is Maybe we can head back there at some point. adorned with the symbol of a leafless tree, should you come across it. If not, however, then I shall simply... Put it out of my mind. Adorn with the symbol of a leafless tree, Flemeth's Grimoire. Okay, we shall we shall keep an eye out for that then. We'll probably have to, we'll probably go back to the tower at some point. It, it is it's safe now the tower, isn't it? So we should be okay, I think. I hope. Win. I don't think I've spoken to Win much, so. Rest, rest would be welcome. Uh, are you all right? Yes, yes, of course. I am just a little weary. As you may have noticed, I'm no spring chicken. <laughs> no, you're a person. Oh, God. <laughs> you are very sprightly for your age, though. Thank you. 
You're very kind to say so. Uh, I'm a nice person. But in all honesty, I do not know how many years I have left in me. I have lived for such a long time. But there is always something else to do. And I have to keep going in order to do it. I think I will be glad when I am done. I'm sure you'll be kicking around for years, yes. Oh, I don't know. I really don't. Oh, come on, Wynn. You'll be fine. Have you encountered many abominations, apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? Uh, well, there was Connor. Ah, yes, Connor. Of course. The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them that frightened me the most. Just quite terrifying. One slip. All it takes is one slip, and everything you are is simply gone. Replaced by madness. We shall not slip, though. And there though. is no turning back. We're not slipping. Or at least that's what they say. You have doubts? Of late, I have begun to wonder if... If there is any way an abomination can be... Cured. Or if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity. Their humanity. Hmm. Fallen retains one's humanity, one is not an abomination. Yes. It is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If those are lacking, if the mage remembers the person they truly are, then they are not an abomination. I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. Yep. You're very welcome. So, tell me, how did you become a Grey Warden? Well, I met Duncan he likes me. Uh, I'll how mask and my family. Don't Duncan help me escape. Arl Rendon how? The Earl of Amaranthine? Why would he do such a thing to you? Uh, I'm the son of Bryce Kuslin, son of Hyover. You are... You are the last of the Kuslins? I had no idea. My lord. <laughs> Don't, I'm just a Grey Warden now. Yes, I suppose so. You can no longer have a title, can you? But that does not mean you must forget utterly where you came from. Take heart, dear friend. You survived, even when you were not expected to. We do not know yet what lies in store for you, or the name you carry. It is not so bad, is it? Being a Grey Warden? Be nice if, if my family was alive. I'd give a duff if I, if I see my family again, yeah. Sometimes it gives me comfort to think that everything will end up the way it's supposed to. That it will be all right. You were chosen. You survived the joining when others did not. Perhaps True. it was meant to be. Thank you. I must ask, what does being a Grey Warden mean to you? Means that It means I've chosen to do something important. There's that, of course. But there's more to being a Grey Warden than killing Darkspawn and saving the world from the Blight. Ultimately, well, being a Grey Warden you are a symbol of, 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 of peace as Grey about Warden. Serving all people, whether elves or dwarves or men. You mean say I serve as a protector? As a Grey Warden, you are a guardian of men. And you guard them because their continued existence is more important than you are. Thus, it is you who serves, not they. I'll keep that in mind. A good king, a true king who cares for his land, uses his power to rule firmly but fairly. He serves his people first and foremost. Yep. The king who does not do this, who believes that he is entitled to his power, who abuses it, and uses it for his own means, is a tyrant. I'm looking at you, Logan. You bitch. Uh, so no way having power confines you. If you live apart from others, and your actions affect only you, then you may do as you wish. But if you have power, influence, and strength, your every action will be as a drop of water in a clear, still pond. The drop causes ripples, and ripples spread. Think of how far they will go, 
how wide they will become, how will they affect the pond? But I've lectured enough for today. I she's uh, before I wear out my welcome. She's wise beyond her years. Is weird, isn't she? Is there something you need? Anything else I can ask her? Why didn't, why didn't you want to stay at the tower? The circle is in good hands. Irving knows what to do, and he doesn't need me underfoot. For now, I will support those that battle the Darkspawn. I do feel I left things unfinished in Ostagar. There is so much left to do, and I would be part of it. Well said. I'm glad for your company. The Grey Wardens, all two of you, need all the help you can get. There's two of us I left. That's, this through to the bitter end. that's a scary after thought. That, if I am still left standing, then I will return to the circle. I'm sure you'll be able to reset if you so choose. Perhaps. Is there something you need? I will answer to the best of my ability. How do you become a mage? People don't become mages. They are born mages. The talent just surfaces later. But you are asking how I ended up at the Circle. I was brought there by the Templars, just like many of the other apprentices. I don't remember very much. I was very young then. What about your family? I didn't have a family. I never knew my real parents. My earliest memory was of hiding in a hayloft on a farm, trying to keep warm. Blimey. I was found, and the farmer's wife was kind enough not to send me away. But... They had children of their own, and I was never made to feel welcome. The eldest son was the worst. He was always calling me a stray and throwing anything he could get his hands on at me. And Why I are some people so mean? Happened, but one day, he just found his hair on fire. <laughs> Fortunately, there was a large trough nearby. And you didn't, uh, you didn't have anything to do, to, to do with this, would you win, did you? No, no, no. Was he seriously hurt? I had singed his hair and eyebrows, but injured little other than his pride. Who knows what they would have done to me had he been more seriously hurt. Thankfully, all I had to endure was a few nights locked in a cold barn with a bowl of water and a crust of bread. The Templars arrived several mornings later. Tch. What happened when, when you arrived at the tower? I'll never forget the moment the Templars led me into the entrance hall of the tower. I had never seen anything so grand in my life. I stopped being afraid then. I knew I was home. That's a great story. Well, that's about all there is to my tale. That's how I came to the circle. What was life like in the tower? I would be lying if I said it was easy. First, there were rules, and we were constantly watched to make sure we behaved appropriately. Then there was the study of magic. We had to cast the spells just so, control the effects completely. A single word spoken incorrectly, a gesture out of sync, and lack of focus. And we needed to have perfect focus, or we would be in danger. Hmm. At least you learn the dangers of magic from the circle. Without the circle and my mentors, I would not have been where I am today. And there was joy in life at the circle. The joys of fellowship in knowing that you were not alone in your struggles. In spite of everything, I was happy in the tower, and I loved it. Okay. Well, Wynne is a very useful party member. She's a, she's a very wise and kind woman, so I'm very glad to have her around. Uh, Zevran, what about you? What have you got to say? Yeah, I am. Care to answer some questions? Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. What does it take to become an assassin? Well, the crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training. The sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. <laughs> it's surprising how well one can do in such a field. So you have to be a murderer. Now, now. It need not be thought of so crudely. We all do our share of murdering around here, don't we? An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. Debilitate your foe, either by poison or by crippling their limbs, makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. Fair enough. That sounds like it could be useful. See? Getting paid for the act is beside the point. 
An assassin is more a tactical choice than a lifestyle. Of course, the Crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets, shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. So let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? <laughs> oh, he disapproves, so... Oh. Here I am. It's probably because I called him a murderer. I, I do apologize, Evan. Oh, I certainly could, but I won't. I swore to the Crows that the things they taught me were to remain a secret. And while, yes, they are already angry at me, I'd rather not push things, you see. Okay. You don't think this is important? That's a, that's a very well If you are truly insistent, well, let me think about it. The Crows are already angry at me, yes? Who knows? Here I am. I, I reckon he'll probably do it if you get his approval up. So we'll just leave that. Can I answer the questions? Oh, this should be good. Got some Go more ahead. from. Why do you want to leave the crows exactly? Well, now, I imagine that's a very fair question. Being an assassin, after all, is a, a living, at least as far as such things go. I was simply never given the opportunity to choose another way. So, if that choice presents itself, why should I not seize upon it? You didn't choose to join the crows? Mm -hmm. To be truthful. I didn't even know the crows existed when I joined them. Wow. I was but a boy of seven when I was purchased. For three sovereigns, I'm told. Which is a good price, considering I was all ribs and bone and didn't know the pommel of a dagger from the pointy end. <laughs> the crows buy all their assassins that way. Buy them young. Raise them to know nothing else but murder. And if you do poorly in your training, you die. How that system works? Of course. You compete against your fellow assassins, and those who survive are rightfully proud of it. In Antiva, being a crow gets you respect. It gets you wealth. It gets you women. And men. Or whatever it is you might fancy. <laughs> but that does not mean doing what is expected of you always. And it means being expendable. It's a cage, if a gilded cage. Pretty, but confining. Hmm. So what is it you fancy, exactly? I fancy many things. I fancy things that are beautiful and things that are strong. I fancy things that are dangerous and exciting. Would you be offended if I said I fancied you? Right. Uh... No, but you didn't bother. Ah, that's too bad. <laughs> I do so enjoy it when I get to be flirty. As for what I'll do in the future, uh... presuming that there is one, I truly can't imagine. It might be interesting to go into business for myself. Ugh. For a change. Far away from Antiva, of course. For now, naturally, I go where you go. So... I assume Zevran is either bi or gay, one of the two. That's that, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, if, won't the crows eventually find you? <laughs> eventually can be a very, very long time if one plays one's cards right. Come now, enough chit-chat. Talking about the crows summons them, you know. Any Antivan fishwife could tell you so. <laughs> I'll stop disapproving, yeah, Zevran. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you on side. Oh? This should be good. Go ahead. Do you actually enjoy being an assassin? And why not? There are many things to enjoy about being a crow in Antiva. You are respected, uh, you are feared, the authorities go out of their way to overlook your trespasses, even the rewards are nothing to turn your nose up at. As for the killing part, well, some people simply need assassinating. Or do you disagree? Uh, you never killed innocent. Now there is an interesting word, innocent. How many men do you know who can claim to be truly innocent? But if you're talking generalities such as children and relatives and bystanders and such, never on purpose, but it happens. It's unfortunate, but death comes to us all. If not me, then some wasting disease or a fall down the stairs or at the hands of a darkspawn. It's all relative in the end. I guess. It's a very practical attitude. Death happens, as we like to say. And when I get paid for it, death happens more often. As far as enjoying the act of killing itself, why not? There is a certain artistry to the deed. The pleasure of sinking your blade into their flesh and knowing that their life is in your hands. That's quite, uh... 
I'd say no pleasure in killing. It is not pleasure per se. Nothing sexual. It is more a sense of right. Satisfaction. If you a feeling of power. Does that make sense? <sighs> no matter. There are many things I did not enjoy about being a crow. Of course, having no choice, being treated as an expendable commodity. The rules. Oh, so many rules. But simply being an assassin, I like it just fine. I will continue to do it if I can, even if I am not a crow. Honestly, could you picture me doing something else? Don't, uh, why not? You can do whatever you like. Whereas I am content merely doing what I happen to be good at. It's a talent that not many come by, honestly. I don't see why I need not pursue it. Of course, all these thoughts are moot. Chances are still good that you and I will perish, eaten by darkspawn or slain by the crows at some point. Very gruesomely, I imagine. But I mean, I guess so. But enough to chat about. Come, let's move on while our boots still have some wear in them. Huh. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to take sexual pleasure in, in killing people. That's, Here I am. That is the ultimate um, levels of strange. Oh, this should be good. Uh, right. Go ahead. Tell me a little bit about Antiva. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. Don't you want to go back? It's not really a matter of wanting to go back. I cannot go. At least not yet. I hail from the glorious Antiva city. Home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand. My Antiva city. Do you come from someplace comparable? Uh... I was born in Hyer in the north. Oh, I have never seen that place. I am sure it has its charms. And it's dogs. <laughs> Listen to you, you calm down. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine and its dark-haired beauties and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. Is that some, is this, is that some kind of euphemism? <laughs> it may as well be. <laughs> but not this once, no. I mean the smell. For years, I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home, more than anything else. It's not like you've been away from home forever. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in the store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. <laughs> I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? I guess so. Your home is still there, Zevran. True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a handsome Grey Warden? A man who then spares my life? I could not. <laughs> Hans... <laughs> Everyone makes mistakes. Even Grey Wardens who spared the lives of assassins? <laughs> Understood. <laughs> now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. I'm sure I'm sure I have a cake somewhere in my inventory if, if you want a meal. I mean Here I am. You can have that. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Anything else? What's your opinion of the Dalish? I know little enough of the Dalish other than the fact that my mother was one, or so I was told. She had fallen in love with an elven woodcutter and accompanied him back to the city, leaving her clan behind for good. That's not very Dalish of her. Course, the woodcutter died of some filthy disease and my mother was forced into prostitution to pay off his debts. Ah. All this tale in the book. Nice. It's never that's horrible. Is it? It seemed normal enough a tale growing up. No different than the other elven boys in the whorehouse. I didn't know my mother either, of course. She died giving birth to me. Oh. My first victim, as it were. We were all raised communally by the whores. It was a happy enough existence, ignoring the occasional beating. Until eventually I was sold to the crows. I brought a good price, so I hear. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry for you, Zevran. That's very kind of you to say, but it is not necessary. It could have been much worse. Shall I tell you about what happened to the other whorehouse boys who did not fetch a decent price with the crows? 
Surely your life has not been so idyllic. People like you and I are not the product of happy lives of contentment, after all. You can say that again. My original point is that my mother's Dalish nature was always a point of fascination for me. Through all the years of my crow training, the one thing of my mother's that I possessed was a pair of gloves. They were of Dalish make, I knew that much, and beautiful. I had to keep them hidden, of course, as we were not allowed such things. Eventually, they were discovered, and I never saw them again. I do have Dalish gloves, don't I? I can give them to him. How do you feel about the Dalish in general? I don't feel anything about them. Oh, we heard about them in the city. Even deep in Antiva. I even had the notion once to run off and join them. Blimey. Naturally, the reality did not live up at all to the fantasies I had constructed as a boy, staring at those gloves. But such is life. Come, enough talk of the Dalish. Let us move on. No problemo. Here I am. Please rush to get him on side now. Oh, I don't think he's got any one. more options than this. No. Right. Let's ask him Here personal questions. Oh, this should be good. What would you like to discuss? <laughs> <laughs> That's quite bad. Never mind. I really want to discuss something personal with you, with you Zevran. Get out. No. Um, in all seriousness, no. We're all good. Let's try and give... Uh, Win and Zevran some gifts, though, if possible. As I'm sure we have something we can give to them. Some of these little... Uh... Amulet of Memories? A Cat Lady's Hobble Stick. What? Unless there's anything in particular that, 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 that she wants. Uh... That is... Nice. Ah! Thank you. Shit! Ah, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Oh no, what have I done? Here, have this. A generous okay. <laughs> Thank you ever so much. Oh, I, oh, I didn't. Oh. Oh, oh, I should have known. It's a hobble stick, for God's sake. Wind can summon a memory. Really? Well, <laughs> at least we <laughs> at least we got, got got her back up to kind of. Approval plus 15 hostile. I don't think that's quite right. Uh, well, I apologise for that win. I, I didn't mean that. That was that was a pretty horrible uh, mishap by myself. Uh, and he will surely want the Dalish gloves, won't he? There you are. Gloves? You're giving me gloves? What for? They're Dalish gloves, like your mother's. I... Maker's breath. You're right. It is like my mother's. The leather was less thick, and it had more embroidery, but these are very close, and quite handsome. You're welcome. Do I seem surprised? Perhaps I am. Still, I appreciate the fact that you even thought of me. No one has simply given me a gift before. Thank you. You're very welcome, Zevran. That was so worrying. I actually thought I just, I just basically totally screwed up Wynn's relationship with me. She is still hostile, though, apparently. Does she does she respond differently if I tried to speak to her now? Because I feel like I've well and truly goofed there. Is there something you need? I will answer to the best of my ability. Does she? No. Okay, never mind. I, I think she'll be okay. I hope. Right, who else have, who else have we not spoken to? Oh, Liliana, of course. Something I can help with? Yes? Anything else? What's on your mind? I think she's gone through all the tales, hasn't she? So I don't think we have anything else. So that's pretty much everybody then. Okay. Right. In that case, uh, we shall end this episode here, guys. I know not a lot has happened, but it's nice to talk to, to, talk to the, the new party members, get a bit of backstory, understand them a bit more. Wynne is someone who I really like. She seems very wise and friendly, and uh, I think she'll be very useful because she's quite a useful mage in combat as well. And Zevran has his faults, but... Yeah. He, he's, he's, he's not that bad. He's, he's not that bad. He's, 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 he's alright. He's decent. So, yeah, I'll definitely give it. I, I'm not going to send anybody away. Definitely not. Um, but yeah. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I do hope you have enjoyed, and I will catch you in the next episode of Dragon Age Origins. That's it, guys. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.